Hi, I'm Shanine Netter, Program Manager for the Total Joint and Spine Centers at Inland Valley Medical Center. We understand you have a number of choices when it comes to your healthcare needs, and we want to thank you for allowing us to serve you on your way back to a healthier you. This presentation will cover those items you will need to understand before, during, and after your procedure. Following the presentation, you will be required to take a short quiz to test your knowledge. You will also have the opportunity to ask and submit any questions at that time. Again, thank you for choosing Inland Valley Medical Center, where we are committed to providing high quality patient care and patient experience. Inland Valley Medical Center Spine Program Preoperative Education. Introduction. Welcome. The information provided in this video is a general guide to help you prepare for your spine surgery. If additional information is required, always seek advice from your physician regarding your specific needs. We have established goals for all of our spine program patients. However, we do understand that everyone will achieve them at a different pace. Objectives for today. Understanding your procedure. What to expect during the hospital stay. Physical occupational therapy. Pain management. How to care for yourself at home. Discharge planning. Laminectomy. Laminectomy. Removal of a piece of a lamina to take pressure off the nerve. Patients typically go home after two days. Recovery may take up to six weeks. Disectomy. Anterior cervical disectomy. Removal of ruptured or bulging disc material. Patients typically go home the day after surgery. Recovery time takes about six weeks. Spinal fusion. One or more bone vertebrae permanently join with hardware, titanium rods, plates, screws, or cages. After three to six months, the bone should join the vertebrae to form bone. Spinal fusion often requires a bone graft, which can be donor bone or your own bone from your hip. Preparing for surgery guidebooks. As you prepare for surgery, please review your guidebook. The guidebook provides information regarding frequently asked questions, pre-op checklist, hospital stays, caring for yourself at home, the role of the caregiver, discharge instructions, and resuming activities. The guidebook also contains resources for disease management, such as diabetes, COPD, and high blood pressure. It is important that pre-existing diseases are controlled and discussed with your surgeon to help reduce your risk of post-operative complications. Preparing for surgery, your home. Our goal is to discharge you home safely. Here are a few tips to prepare your home for recovery. Equipment that may be helpful. Chairs with armrest, a raised toilet seat, recliner chairs are okay. No special beds are necessary. Declutter and remove throw rugs. Prepare frozen meals. Go to the grocery store. Arrange for someone to care for your pets and additional household chores. Clean your recovery area in your home with disinfectant to help prevent infection. Everything helps. Preparing for surgery, medical clearance. Please complete all appointments and tests in a timely manner. Make an appointment with your primary care physician. Review instructions to stop or change any medications. Lab work, EKG, chest x-ray if recommended by your surgeon. Complete additional consults as recommended by your surgeon. Stop taking medications that may cause bleeding at least seven to 10 days prior to surgery. Blood thinners, anti-inflammatory medications. Preparing for your surgery, nutrition. Nutrition before surgery is important to help get your body optimized for surgery. Here are a few helpful tips. Drink enough fluids prior to surgery. Adequate protein intake. Increase your fiber to help reduce constipation. If it's okay with your primary care physician slash surgeon, take an iron supplement. Adequate calcium along with vitamin D as per your physician. Stop drinking alcohol for one week 
prior to surgery. Preparing for surgery smoking. Stop smoking. Smoking delays your healing process. Nicotine prevents bone growth, which increases your risk for a failed fusion. Smoking reduces the size of blood vessels, which decreases the amount of oxygen circulating in the body. Smoking increases your blood pressure and your heart rate. Smoking increases your chance of having a blood clot. If you need help quitting, please ask for resources. Preparing for surgery, what to bring to the hospital. Bring your guidebook, loose fitting clothes, any shoes or leg orthotics, your back brace or neck brace if given to you before surgery, leave your valuables, cash and medications at home, identify your coach. Who is your coach? Your coach is a family member or friend that provides motivation and comfort, supports and assists in therapy sessions, and helps to gain confidence for discharge home. Due to the current health pandemic, Inland Valley has implemented the following visitation restrictions. Visiting hours are from 12 p.m. to 8 p.m. Only one visitor per day. Visitors are not allowed to go in and out of the facility. Preparing for surgery, pre-admission testing registration. Due to the current pandemic, the pre-admission testing appointment is now conducted over the phone. You should receive a phone call a few days prior to your surgery. Please make sure that your phones are available to leave a voicemail message if you are unable to answer the phone. The pre-admitting RN will review labs, EKGs, and chest X-ray results, review your medication list, request a copy of your advanced directives, MRSA screening, provide special instructions on showering and bathing, notification of hospital arrival time will be given to you at this time, and notification of the drive-by COVID testing. Day before surgery, nothing to eat or drink after midnight prior to surgery, shower or bathe with special soap the night before your surgery and the morning of your surgery. Please notify your surgeon or the hospital staff immediately if you feel sick, if you have a fever, cough, or shortness of breath, if you have any new open cuts, scratches, or wounds on any part of your body, are having trouble urinating with fever, frequency, and urgency. Day of surgery arrival. Report to the ER admitting entrance. Check in at the information desk. Hospital registration with your insurance card and photo ID. You and one designated visitor will be escorted to the pre-op waiting area. Meet anesthesiologist and surgeon. The anesthesiologist will review health and medication history, discuss nausea and pain management options, discuss anesthesia, which is generally general anesthesia, which may cause mild sore throat after surgery. Recovery room, post-anesthesia care unit. In the recovery room, we will stabilize your vital signs, make sure that your neuromuscular assessment is completed, take care of your comfort measures. Recovery times may vary, you will stay in the recovery room until an inpatient bed is assigned. No visitors are allowed in the recovery room. Recovery hospital routine. Vital signs are every four hours. You will be up and dressed in your recliner each morning. If you have a urinary catheter, it is removed the next morning or as ordered by your surgeon. You will have individual physical therapy session daily and individual occupational therapy session daily. Recovery Physical Therapy. Our goal is early ambulation, usually twice a day. Physical therapy will help you with getting in and out of your bed, getting in and out of your chair, walking, stairs, and transfers. Recovery Occupational Therapy. An occupational therapist is a therapist that helps with activities of daily living, such as bathing, dressing, and hygiene. Recovery Post-operative complications. Please discuss with your surgeon the possible risk factors and complications associated with surgery, such as blood clots, infection, pneumonia, anesthesia-related complications such as nausea, vomiting, and low blood pressure. Recovery, key things to remember. 
Postoperatively, our goal is to reduce the risk of postoperative complications. Here is a list of postoperative activities that you can do as you recover in your hospital room and at home. Sequential compression devices on while lying and sitting. We encourage you to stay out of bed and sit in a recliner for all meals. Walk in the hallways. Use your incentive spirometer 10 times an hour while awake. Recovery falls. Falls are also considered a complication. To prevent falls, please call or ask for assistance before attempting to get out of your bed or recliner. Wear skid-free socks at all times while walking. Our staff will be rounding on you frequently. Recovery spine precautions. After surgery, please adhere to the following spine precautions. No bending, no lifting, no twisting. Recovery braces. Please bring your braces with you to the hospital. If you do not have a brace, your surgical team will provide a brace after surgery as determined by your surgeon. Recovery pain management. Effective pain management involves you and your healthcare team. Our goal is to manage your pain after surgery with realistic pain management goals. This is our pain scale. Pain is rated from zero to 10. Our goal is to manage your pain or discomfort so you are able to sleep, eat, hold a conversation, and move around with physical therapy. Recovery types of discomfort. Incisional, soreness or pressure, usually treated with pain medications. Muscle spasms, tight grabbing sensation, treated with muscle relaxants. Nerve pain is a numbness and tingly shooting and hot pain, treated with medications. Recovery, additional comfort measures. In addition to pain medication, please use additional comfort measures such as changing your positions often, aromatherapy, music, up in the chair or walking. Ask staff if it is okay for coaches to walk with you. Never refuse an opportunity to walk. Recovery pain management. Remember, we cannot make the pain go completely away. Our goal is to manage the discomfort so you can eat, sleep, and move around. Nerve pain often persists after surgery or is slightly worse due to manipulation of the nerve during surgery. We will do all we can to ensure your comfort and safety. Your role in managing pain. Intercept the pain. Ask for medication when the pain starts to escalate. Do not wait. Take your medication on a regular basis. Tell the nurse if the medication is not effective. Ask questions. Be sure you understand the pain management efforts that are in place and their side effects. Transition to home, discharge plan. Our goal is to discharge you home after surgery. Your discharge plan starts before the surgery and includes patient family discussion prior to surgery, your surgeon, program manager, therapist, and inpatient care coordinator. Transition to home after care. Your discharge planning options are home with outpatient services, which is strongly recommended, provides core stabilization, begins four to six weeks postoperatively, the surgeon's office will arrange. Home with home health PT, if criteria is met, hospital to arrange prior to discharge. Please have transportation arrangements confirmed prior to surgery. Transition home, discharge medications, narcotics. Take pain medication exactly as prescribed. Speak to your surgeon about when to decrease or discontinue pain meds. Take stool softeners. Resume preoperative medications. Avoid Motrin, Advil, aspirin for three months if you have had a fusion. Transition to home, home care. Change your positions hourly. Wear your brace as instructed. Apply spine precautions to all activities. Walk daily and steadily increase your distance. Limit stair use to two times a day for the first week at home. Transition to home dressing change. Keep incision clean and dry 
follow discharge instructions for wound care. Notify the doctor of fever, incisional redness, drainage, odor, or complaints of increased pain. Please do not use ointments, creams, lotions, or solutions on the incision. Transition to home, remember, measure your progress weekly. Follow your spine precautions to promote optimal healing. Resist the urge to hurry back to your usual activities. Eat a healthy, balanced diet. Drink plenty of fluids. Do not smoke. No showering unless otherwise instructed by your surgeon. Do not miss your follow-up appointment. We appreciate your feedback. In effort to ensure we are always providing safe, high quality and compassionate care, please take a few minutes to let us know if we met your expectations. In the days after you leave our hospital, you may get a phone call, email, or letter asking about your recent hospital stay. This request will come from a company by the name of Press Ganey. The caller ID is 574-309-9553. Again, my name is Shanine Netter, Orthopedic Program Manager here at Inland Valley Medical Center. Always feel free to contact me with your questions and concerns Monday through Friday during regular business hours. Good luck with your surgery. Now it's time to test your knowledge. Click the link below to start your quiz.